Hi, I'm Robert Gamblin, founder of Gamblin Conservation Colors. In this video, I'd like to show you our white and black colors and discuss their different qualities. We have four whites. Titanium white is by far the most used white in conservation colors and in artist colors today. It has a high tinting strength, is very opaque, and very clean and neutral in color. It reflects back more light than any other pigment. In our measurements, it consistently reflects back over 97% of the light that falls on it. While this is great, this may be more white than you need in the particular work you are restoring. Case in point, lead white and the other whites used in art making before titanium dioxide came into use have a lower tinting strength, are less opaque, and may not have as clean a color. This is precisely why we produce our extender white. This is made from barium sulfate and, like all our colors, is ground into Laripol A81. The color has almost no tinting strength, is super transparent, and very muted in its color. Our intention with this color is that you can add it to titanium white, or any other color actually, and by blending the two colors together, you can easily match the opacity and tinting strength of lead white. In fact, you can create a white at any point in the spectrum from the lightest and the brightest to the most muted and transparent. Our next white is our Kremnitz white. We have found that there are a few conservators who want to use lead white and like its properties. We believe that we are the only company making color for art restoration that provides this color. We produce it only in a half pan size. It is warmer in color than titanium. It is less opaque and has, le and has a lower tinting strength. Our last white is a titanium buff. Similar in opacity and tinting strength to titanium white, it has a muted yellow color that you may find useful when restoring old work that has acquired the patina of age. It might be less work to recreate this look with titanium buff than with a strong clean white such as titanium. Now moving on to our black colors. Ivory black is a pigment that has been used since prehistory and is certainly through the whole history of easel painting. It remains the standard black in use today and has been since the beginning for both art making and conservation. According to my study, there has never been much ivory burnt to make ivory black. Rather, the name ivory black has been used for hundreds of years to name the highest quality of bone black available to the artist. It has earned its place on most painters' palettes by being so easy to handle. It has a moderate tinting strength and is semi-transparent, so it works well in graying color. One thing that ivory black does not do well is touching up damage on passages of black in paintings that have become very transparent because of their age. <clears throat> These black passages that have acquired a deep space and very dark in color. Backgrounds of old Dutch paintings are an excellent example. It is difficult to match the darkness and depth of an aged black paint with a new black paint. This is precisely why we have lamp black on our palette. Being very transparent and very black, it can make this difficult technique possible. Our Van Dyke Brown should be thought of as our warm black. It is a mixture of ivory black and burnt umber. It is useful when one needs to both gray a mixture and warm it up at the same time. Black Spinel is the least well-known of all the colors we make, but it is unique. All of the other black pigments are made from burning something. Black Spinel is made by fusing metals together at high heat. Just as cobalt blue is made fusing cobalt and aluminum in a furnace to produce the beautiful blue, black spinel is made by fusing copper and chrome. You should therefore think of this color as the most permanent of blacks 
It is opaque, it has a high tinting strength, and is very neutral in its tint. And I thank you for watching.